When you're in the middle of a dogfight, you don't have time to think about the theoretical best move. Your response needs to be instinctive, and the only way to build that instinct is with practice. In this two-part series, we'll cover one of the ways the U.S. Air Force builds that instinct, the extended trail exercise. And that exercise begins with the perch setup. Before we jump into the exercise details, we need to take a look at where it fits into the overall Air Force pilot training pipeline. There are a couple routes students take on their journey to becoming a fighter pilot in the USAF. They can go through undergraduate pilot training where they will learn the basics of aviation in the military. This includes the things that we went over in the basic radio comms video and formation flying series while flying the T-6 trainer. After UPT, students then attend Introduction to Fighter Fundamentals to learn fundamental combat skills. During IFF, they will learn about basic fighter maneuvers, or BFM for short, and the topics covered in my basic surface attack series while they fly the T-38 supersonic trainer. There's another path fighter pilots can take known as the Euronado Joint Jet Pilot Training Program, pronounced NGIPT, which is a joint program that combines UPT and IFF into one program. No matter which path a future fighter pilot takes, one thing will be the same. At some point, before they transition to combat fundamentals, they will go through the extended trail exercise because it teaches a lot of the fundamentals that will be needed later on in BFM training. The extended trail exercise will teach you how to use pursuit curves and dynamic maneuvering to maintain a good offensive position on another aircraft. In addition, it also teaches the perch setup, which is used extensively in real-world dogfight training. The extended trail exercise is broken up into three components. The perch setup, the reposition phase, and the maneuvering phase. The perch is the position we begin training at. Reposition is the intermediary phase that gets us from the perch to the final part, the maneuvering phase, where we'll be doing most of our maneuvering work. In that final phase, we'll be in a formation with one aircraft trailing behind the other. However, both aircraft will leave their throttles in a fixed position with the trailer having a higher setting. What this means is that throughout the exercise, the trailer will continuously creep up on the lead aircraft. To keep from overshooting the lead aircraft, the trail aircraft will have to use geometry to stay in that offensive rear quarter position. We'll go over what maneuvers you can perform to stay in an offensive position, but first, we need to go over how you get there. The perch setup is a two aircraft procedure with one aircraft trailing the other similar to what you'd see in a dogfight. It's used as a starting point for one-on-one -on -one training by real-life fighter pilots and it's an essential part of the extended trail exercise. The perch setup begins with the line abreast formation and a radio call that goes like this. Colt 2-1, next exercise is perch setup, offensive for 2. Wing will acknowledge by saying 2. If you don't understand what all that means, then check out the videos I posted covering radio calls and formations. Links are in the description. Next, lead will direct the check turn and turn 45 degrees. The direction is important. If lead directs a turn toward wing, then wing will end up in a defensive position at the end of the perch setup. In other words, wing will be in the front and lead will be at the back. Conversely, if lead turns away from wing, then wing will be in the offensive or rear position. In this example, we'll have lead turning left or away from wing, which means lead will be defending and wing will be on the offensive. As the offensive fighter reaches pure pursuit, which means pointing the nose straight at the defensive aircraft, the defender will reverse the turn direction. This typically happens right as the defender reaches the end of the 45 degree check turn. Once that turn direction reversal happens, the defensive fighter will continue that turn until the offender is at 40 degrees of aspect angle which just means 40 degrees off the tail. In level flight, this is what that would look like, with the offender located just above the edge of the wing. However, you're far more likely to get 40 degrees AA in a turn. Here's what that would look like. You can see the offender is just past the edge of the wing when in a turn. So as a defender, you want to keep maneuvering until you see this picture. It's not just the defender that has responsibilities in the perch setup. The offensive fighter is responsible for setting the range. Since we begin the perch at line abreast, we'll be at approximately one nautical mile of distance, or around 6,000 feet. But as we progress through the turns, that distance will close. The offender will call out ranges until 3,000 feet, so 6,000, 5,000, 4,000. Once you get to 3,000, the offender then makes a radio call of fights on to move on to the next phase. 
That's the perch setup, and it might seem like a lot to remember, but with practice, it becomes second nature. Let's take a look at how all this works in the air. We begin in line abreast at 6,000 feet apart from each other. Lead is on the left, and we'll be the defender in this perch setup. So we'll start with the 45 degree check to the left. Once lead reaches 45 degrees of turn, lead will then immediately reverse the turn and watch wing. At this point, lead is looking to set the correct amount of aspect angle. What we want here is about 40 degrees. 40 degrees is right about here. Lead will then maintain this picture until fights on is called. Now let's take a look at the perch setup from the other pilot's point of view. Again, we're starting at line abreast and begin a 45 degree check turn towards the defensive aircraft. As the offensive fighter, our goal here is to go pure pursuit on the defender. So we put the defender in the gun sight and just follow him through the turn. With this profile, we'll naturally start closing the gap between us. Once we're down to 3,000 feet, the defender will then call fights on so we can move on to the next phase. As long as everyone does their part, it's really that simple. Now you might be asking, how do I tell how far apart we are? In real life, range can be estimated by using visual references on the other aircraft, stadiometric ranging, or using air-to-air TACAN. In DCS, we have an additional method in the form of labels. Feel free to use whatever method works best for you. To recap, the perch starts at line abreast. Then you go into a 45 degree check turn towards whichever aircraft will be the defender. Once the offender is going pure pursuit, the defender reverses the turn and sets 40 degrees of aspect angle. Meanwhile, the offender closes at 3,000 feet and calls fights on. This might seem like a lot to memorize at first, but once you've practiced it a few times, you'll see it's actually pretty easy to remember. And once you know it, you'll know the same procedure used by fighter pilots for real life training. There are still two more parts of the extended trail exercise we need to cover. The reposition phase and the maneuvering phase. We'll cover both of those in the next video in this series. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.